ordinary horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Hi! The stage from Granville to Dry Rock bounced and swayed along the trail as the driver continually urged the horses on without regard for the comfort of the two passengers inside the coach. Get around here! Get around here! One of the passengers was Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, who was returning from a visit with friends in Granville. As Dan bounced from one end of the seat to the other when the stage hit an extra big bump, the other passenger, a kindly-looking old man, spoke with a twinkle in his eye. Uh, my name's Hank Keller. What's yours, sir? Glad to know you, Mr. Keller. My name is Dan Reed. Dan Reed. Fine name. And you seem like a nice boy. Thank you, sir. Hey, going to Dry Rock? <laughs> that is, if the stage don't bust apart before we get there. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I have friends near Dry Rock. My horse is waiting for me at the livery stable there, too. Have you ever been to the far west before, sir? Nope. Can't say as I have, Daniel. Got a grandson out there, though, who's doing mighty well for himself. Yep, mighty well, if I do say so myself. Oh, <laughs> then you're going to visit him now? I well, guess you can call it that. But I figure it'll be a pretty long visit. <laughs> Ned, that's my grandson's name, you know. Well, Ned, he kept writing to me saying as how well he was doing and saying what a shame it was I was tied down with the little store and house I had in Kansas City. Oh, you own a store and house in Kansas City? Well, I did own them, Daniel, but I sold them. Oh, doesn't your grandson know you're coming, Mr. Keller? <laughs> nope. I'm going to give him a big surprise by just busting in on him. <laughs> but how will you find him? <laughs> Everybody knows my grandson out around Dry Rock. Guess it'll surprise you to hear I'm grandfather to Ned Franklin. Ned Franklin? Yep, that's him, my daughter's boy. <laughs> you must have heard of him, Daniel. I'm afraid I haven't, sir. Well, you see, I haven't been around Dry Rock very long. Well, even yeah. so, you ought to have heard of him. Owns one of the biggest ranches thereabouts, and he's part owner of a big mine near Dry Rock, too. Told me so himself in his last letter a month ago. Golly. Well, maybe I've seen him around town. What does Ned Franklin look like? Uh, well, now, he's about 27 years old come April. He's tall, dark, and handsome as all get out. What ranch is it? I mean, what brand do they use? Oh, that. Uh, seems to me it's a bar and then a Y after it. That's it. The Bar Y Ranch. Bar Y? Oh, I know where that is. Why? Well, what was you going to say, Daniel? 
I would. Nothing, sir. The Bar Y is a big ranch, one of the biggest. Sure, yes, you see? That's what Ned said in his letters. <laughs> I'm sure anxious to see it. I never expected to live on a big western ranch like that. I hope you find your grandson all right. Uh, I'll be glad to call on you both when you get settled. But then it's a date, Daniel. We'll be looking for you at the Bar Y Ranch within a few days. And don't you fail to come out either. <laughs> After the stage arrived in Dry Rock, Dan Reed went to the livery stable and got his horse, Victor. Then he rode out of town into the hills until he came to the place where the Lone Ranger and Tonto were camping. Oh, ho, Victor. Ho, boy. Easy, boy. Steady, fella. Hi, Dan. Oh, Hi. Dan. Hi, Tonto. Have a good time. Oh, yes, sir. Thunder and Clarabelle both sent their regards to you and Tonto. Yeah, well, that was nice of them. Oh, I uh, met a nice old man on the stage. Yes? He came through from Kansas City. His name is Hank Keller. I'm glad you had good company on your trip back. What I can't make out is that he said he's making a surprise trip to stay with his grandson out here. Well, what's puzzling about that, Dan? Ah, what you wonder about? Well, he said his grandson, who rode often, told Mr. Keller about the large ranch he owned and about owning part of a big mine. Well, what ranch is it, do you know? That's a strange part of it, sir. The old man said it was the Bar Y Ranch. The Bar Y? That's owned by Jed Banks, and his father was an orphan. Jed never had grandparents living. Ah, Jen, about 50. Yes, I know. But Hank Keller said his grandson was about 27 years old, tall, dark, and good-looking. His name is Ned Franklin. Ned Franklin? Yes. Uh, have you heard of him, sir? Yes, Dan, I have. Uh, we hear of Franklin. Him not own ranch or mine either, Dan. Oh, gosh. Then I wonder why he wrote things like that to Mr. Keller. Poor old man was so excited and so, well, proud of his grandson and all... Golly, I just thought. Thought what? Oh, Mr. Keller went to the livery stable and hired a driver and buckboard to take him to the Bar Y Ranch. I see. But the Bar Y Ranch is out beyond here, Dan. The buckboard hasn't gone by on the trail yet, I'm sure. That's right. Well, Mr. Keller said he was going to stop in town for a short time to get a little gift for his grandson. Hmm. That gives me time anyway. Time, sir? Yes, there's something I want to do, Dan. Since you seem to think so well of Mr. Keller... I thought of something that will save him embarrassment and heartache. Oh, I'd sure hate to see him disappointed in his grandson. Mr. Keller seemed to think so much of him. You stay here with Toto, Dan. I'm going to ride over to the Bar Y Ranch right now and have a talk with Jed Banks. I'll disguise myself first as another rancher. Come on, Toto. You can help me fix my disguise before I leave. Uh -huh. After fixing a suitable disguise so that he could ride without his mask... The Lone Ranger set out for the Bar Y Ranch. A short time later, he pulled up in front of the large ranch house. Oh, Silver, oh, yes. Let me pull up. I hope Jed is here at the ranch house. How do you do? Good afternoon. I've come to talk to Mr. Banks. Oh, of course. I'm Sally Banks. My father's inside. Won't you come in, Mr. Uh... Uh, you can call me Smith. Come right in, Mr. Smith. Thanks. Dad, here's a Mr. Smith who wants to talk to you. Mr. Smith? Good afternoon, Jed. I'll leave you two men to yourself. Hey, that voice sounds familiar. But for the life of me, sir, I can't seem to place you. <laughs> My name really isn't Smith. Here, I think this will identify me, Jed. A silver bullet. Say, no wonder I recognize that voice. I owe a lot to you for the way you saved my prize cattle from those rustlers a few months ago, mister. Sit down, won't you? Thanks, Jed. Now, uh, what can I do for you? I told you if ever I could be of service to you to call on me. Yes, I know. I do want you to do something, Jed. Uh -huh. It won't cost you anything, but it will call for a bit of acting on your part. Acting? What do you mean? Well, you remember Ned Franklin, don't you? Remember him? Confound it, my daughter Sally won't let me forget that smooth-talking sidewinder. To think that she was taken in by that no-good young... Now, now, son. don't get excited, Jed. Why shouldn't I get excited? Why, he almost had me thinking he was the right hombre for Sally for a time. He was assistant manager of the mining company. Going ahead plenty fast. Then he gets into some kind of trouble and lands in jail. It doesn't do to judge too hastily, Jed. When Ned comes up for trial... Maybe he'll be cleared of the charges against him. He's in jail, isn't he? That's enough for me. And it's worse having Sally sulking around all day like she does. But uh, 
What's Franklin got to do with your coming here? Well, Ned's grandfather, a kindly old man, has come to Dry Rock thinking that Ned is very well to do. <laughs> then he's got a surprise coming. That isn't all. The old gentleman, uh, Hank Keller, thinks Ned owns the Barwire Ranch and part of the mining company. Well, I'll be hanged. Looks like Ned Franklin is a good liar along with everything else. Oh, I doubt if he meant harm, Jed. Uh -huh. Ned never expected Mr. Keller to come out here. And he no doubt exaggerated a bit in his letters just to interest the old man. That's yeah, putting it plenty mild, mister. When that old fella Keller finds He's on out. the way out here now, Jed. I want you to think of some way to let him down easy. And to keep him thinking well of his grandson... The boy is his only living relative. Sally'd let the cat out of the bag even if I didn't. She wouldn't if you talked to her. But how am I to go about it? I'll leave that up to you. Well, I said I'd do most anything for you, and I guess I can handle the old man somehow. But for the life of me, I can't figure out why you sort of still side with Ned Franklin. I have my reasons, Jed. You won't regret it if you figure out some way to handle the situation. All right. I'll see the matter through somehow. But it will take a lot of fast thinking. I knew you would, Jed. I'll get going now, but I'll see you again before long. Thanks and goodbye. A short time after the Lone Ranger left the Bar Y Ranch, the buckboard from the livery stable bringing Hank Keller stopped in front of the ranch house. Oh, there, Hook. Uh, how much do I owe you, Bishop? One dollar. Yeah. There you are. And thanks a lot. <laughs> yep. So long, mister. So long. Get it. Go on. Ned sure in for a surprise. <laughs> Howdy, stranger. What can I do for you? Howdy. I'm Hank Keller from Kansas City. Just tell my grandson, Ned Franklin, that I'm here. You mean you're Ned Franklin's grandpa? That's right. Well, come in. Come right in. Uh, say now, this sure is a mighty fine place Ned's got here. I'm going to like it here pretty much. Who are you, mister? You work for Ned? My name's Jed Banks, and I might as well tell uh, you right off the don't bat tell that me, I don't... don't tell me. You see, Ned wrote me a lot about things out here, and I recollect him mentioning you. Uh, yes, sir, he sure did. Hmm. And just what was it that he wrote about me? In a way, I'm sort of curious, Mr. Keller. Well, now, as I recollect, Ned wrote that you was a friend and neighbor of his. You had a mighty pretty daughter he was sort of sweet on. Her. And that she must have got her disposition from her ma, since you was as cantankerous as all get out. Oh, I bless him. <laughs> Ned had a joking way of writing, you know. Well, of all that, a joking way of writing. That isn't the half of it. The fact is, Keller... <laughs> Ned, it'd be right at me if you I knew didn't... I told you that, Jed, so uh, don't mention it. <laughs> now, uh, uh, where's Ned? I want to see him right away. I'll tell you where he is, all right. There's no use beating around the bush. That grandson Dad, of yours is... Dad, the supper's about ready, and uh, I... Oh, I didn't know someone was here. Oh. By Jiminy, that must be the girl Ned wrote about, your daughter Sally. <laughs> girl, I'm Ned's grandpa. Oh, how wonderful. You've come all the way from Kansas City. Yep. <laughs> and what's more, I come to stay. Ned has this big ranch. No, has... see here, Keller. Maybe when Please, you... Please, know... Dad, Mr. Keller was talking to me. Oh. Ned's ranch is a fine one, isn't it? Dad and I come over to stay from time to time. Dad gives Ned advice on how to run things here. Well, of all that... Sally, I won't... Dad always to... gets upset I'm... when he's hungry. But don't worry, Dad. We'll eat right away. <sighs> Ned is away, Mr. Keller. He'll be away for several days at the least. Away, eh? Huh? Well, I suppose being a big rancher, he has business to attend to out of town now and then. Sally, I'm not going through with Dad, this. Dad, you go I... on in to supper. I'm going to take Grandpa Keller out and show him around Ned's ranch. No! Oh. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After leaving the Bar Y Ranch, the Lone Ranger returned to the camp where Tonto and Dan Reed were waiting. Putting his mask on over his disguise, the Lone Ranger instructed Dan to remain in camp. Then he and Tonto set out toward town. As they rode along the trail in the twilight, the masked man spoke. Since Ned's grandfather's come west, we'll have to rush our plans, Tonto. That right. Well, you go tell the sheriff. I'll carry through my part of the plan. I'm sure Ned is ready by this time. Ah, me go to sheriff. And me put two horses back at jail, Kimasabi. Yes. Ned is in a cell with one of the rustlers, hoping that by this time they become friendly. Then go right, I'll meet you and the sheriff on the edge of town later. Now, me tell him. We have to get this thing settled tonight before Jet Banks blows off steam and gives everything away to old Mr. Keller. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. A short time later, Ned Franklin and his cellmate, a rough-looking man named Blackie, were lying on their cots in the cell they shared in the Dry Rock Jail. Suddenly, they were startled by a low voice at the barred window. Ned, Ned Franklin. Hey, who's that? Somebody's at the window. That must be the mask number I told you about, Blackie. Come on over to the window. Yeah, sure. Everything all right, Ned? Sure is. But you came sooner than I expected. Something happened, so I had to make it tonight. Here's a gun for you. Thanks. The guard will come in with your supper soon. It's up to you to do the rest. But be careful. What about my three friends across the hallway? I could get only two horses. They're out back. I have a plan to get them out of here later. I don't waste time or you mess things up. Just as you say. You have a hideout to go to? Yes. Blackie will take me to one in the hills. That right, Blackie? Sure, I told you I would. We'll go where the boss is hiding out. Good. I don't make any slips. I have to leave now. Adios. See you again, Ned. Adios. Say, Ned, you did have a friend on the outside, just like you said. Get me out of here and I'll keep my end of the bargain. You better, Blackie. Remember, I'm the one who has the gun. Here comes the deputy with our supper. Sit down on the cots, quick. Let me handle things, Blackie, and then move fast. Got your supper here, fellas. Here it is. Don't straighten up. I got this gun pointed right at what? you. I'll take your gun. Now get back in the cell and be quiet. All right, all right. Get out quick, Blackie. Make for the back door. Hey. Hey, Blackie, what about us? Don't keep us here. Let's keep it out, Bill. I haven't got time now. Come on, Blackie, quick. Help! 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 Everything worked out just like your masked friend said it would, Ned. I'm sure glad I met up with you. Thanks. How much further do we have to go? Well, we're almost there now. There's a shack just inside that pass up ahead. Good thing the moon's out bright. Are you sure your boss will be there? Uh, don't worry. He'll be there all right. He's smart enough to lay low. The hunt is off for him. He's got plenty of supplies stowed away in the shack. He must be smart to get away. The rest of the gang were caught rustling those prize cattle from the bar wire. He was waiting across the creek for us to drive the herd over. Guess he lit out when he heard the commotion. He'll be surprised to see us. You think he has that mine payroll at the shack? That payroll your gang took just before they got caught. Yeah, I want to get my share of that, too. Maybe we can forget about the others in jail and get them to cut you in on it, making a three-way split. That's too good to hope for. What's the boss's name, Blackie? Ever hear of Pancho Malo? Pancho Malo? Sure. You mean he's the leader of your gang? Yep. Yeah, we're getting close. Here's the pass. Whoa, whoa, there. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Why are we stopping, Blackie? Because I can give the signal. We want to get plugged with a boat. Get up, get up, come on, get up. Hey, look, you can see him now. Stand in the doorway to the shack. Yeah, I see him. Who is that? It's me, Blackie. Who, who, fellow? Who, who? Well, Blackie, it's good to see you. Who is with you, amigo? Oh, uh, this is a good friend of mine, Pancho. He got me out of jail. He was my cellmate. Meet Ned Franklin. Franklin, eh? You will excuse my gun, senor, but I trust nobody. Until I know them well. <laughs> That's a smart way, Pancho. Come inside. 
saw this friend of yours get you out from the jailer, Blackie. What about the others? Uh, we didn't have time to let him out. Ned's friend said maybe he'd have a plan to get him later. Of course, if they don't get out, Poncho, that payroll money wouldn't have to be split so many ways. You uh, have it here, haven't you? See, of course. It is there in that bag under the cot. Tell me of this friend of yours, Senor Franklin. There's not much to tell, Poncho. I got a look at him through the cell window. He wore a black mask and talked in a deep voice. What? He was a tall hombre, too. So... And just why were you in jail, senor? Oh, I was caught breaking into the express office. Oh, you were not very smart, amigo. And neither were you, what? Blackie. Hey, what are you holding a gun on Ned for? What's the idea, Pancho? You fool! That masked man you described, the one who was said to be a friend of Senor Franklin, is the same one who brought the posse that caught the gang, including you. Are you sure? At the time, I didn't get a look at the one you mean, but I heard the others talk about him. It must be the same one. Tall, deep voice, wears a black mask. He's clever, that one. And he's on the side of the law. Holy smoke. You get the bag. We'll leave here at once. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I got it. What about Ned? After all, I have said you are a fool, Blackie. It was a trick. The Senor Franklin is working with that masked man, who is known as the Lone Ranger. Franklin went to jail on some charge only to get information from one of you. I'm sure of that. Now, wait a minute, Poncho. You have no way to prove that. I have that no I... time to argue with you, Senor. When your friend, the masked man, comes... I know he will. He find you here with a bullet in you. All right. Suppose what you say is true. How do you know he isn't outside right now? Well, yeah, perhaps you're right. Blackie, you walk over near the door so you will be behind it if it opens. Sure, and I'll keep this gun handy, too. You notice I am standing close to the wall alongside the window. So no one can shoot at me from outside. Plenty smart, aren't you, Poncho? Of course, amigo. And now, without further delay, I shoot you. Then we leave. Drop that gun! Oh, I am hit! Now, mister, my you shoulder. drop your gun. I got my gun pointed right at oh. your back. Is he the gun I gave you through the jail window, Ned? Yes, I kept the guard's gun like you told oh, me to. The one this crook has is empty. This will take, take care of you. Oh. You all right, Ned? Yes, thanks. Oh. I was hoping you were outside. Here comes the sheriff and his deputies with Tonto. Well, well. Looks like you finished things before we got here. Yes, yeah, Sheriff. Please, that man is the gang's leader. I recognize him as Pancho Malo. He figured things out sooner than I thought he would. Good thing I came out ahead. It sure is. <laughs> oh, I'm glad this is over. Now I can tell Sally and her father my going to jail was all a plan. That's right, Ned. And there's someone else you can explain to when you get to the bar. Why? Right, let's go. I guess Tonto's waiting outside. Sheriff and his deputies can take these men. We sure can. Your plan sure worked out. And thanks to Ned, we got the leader of the gang. Come on, Ned. There's still a bit of unfinished business. Later that night, Jed Banks and his daughter Sally were talking in the living room of the ranch house. Confound it all, Sally. You haven't given me one minute to say a word to the old man. Now he's gone out to go to bed. And what's more, you gave him my room, the best in the house. Now, Dad, calm down. Yeah. I just can't see you hurt Ned's grandfather. But you didn't have to carry through with the lies Ned wrote to him, telling him this is Ned's ranch, playing up about how much Ned's gotten all. By thunder before he goes to sleep, so help me, I'm going to tell him the truth. You kept me from it long enough. Now, now, wait, Dad, please. No, I've made up my mind. Mr. Keller, Mr. Keller, come out here a minute. I'm coming out. Just give me a chance to put something on, will you? I'm through with all this fooling. But, Dad, please wait. Maybe something will... Oh, someone's coming. I'll open the door. Ned. Oh, Ned, it's you. Did you say, Ned? That no-good coyote isn't going to come into my house. Don't be hasty, well, Jed. A masked man. He's all right. He's the one that saved my cattle. Come in, the both of you, and close the door. Then we'll get things straightened out once and for all. Ned, you're out of jail. Oh, I'm so glad I... Out on bail, most likely. <laughs> Stubborn the last, huh, Jen? As a matter of fact, Ned's sort of a hero. He purposely went to jail to get information. Information? Yes, from one of the gang of rustlers. We arranged to have Ned escape with one of them, which he did. He risked his life to lead us to the head of the gang who stole the mining company payroll and who tried to rustle your cattle. The leader was Pancho Malo. Pancho Malo? 
A man killer if ever there was one. That's right. Oh, Ned, I knew you didn't do anything wrong. Thanks, honey. Well, now, what in tarnation what? do you want to see me about? Granddad. Uh, yes, that's the someone else I spoke of, Ned. Well, doggone. <laughs> <laughs> Ned, boy. <laughs> you have a fine place here. <laughs> and a mighty fine girl, too. <laughs> I can see what you meant when you wrote about your friend Jed being kind of cantankerous. <laughs> Ned wrote a lot he didn't really mean. Yeah. Without my glasses, it's kind of hard to be certain. But I would swear you had on a mask, mister. Forget that, Granddad. He's my friend. Hey, the first thing I've got to explain to you is... Well, uh, go on, boy. I'm waiting. Is it that you don't want to share your good fortune with me or something? Oh, granddad, that, that's not <coughs> well, what I mean. Of course mean. he does, Hank. You see, what he's trying to explain is that since he's going to marry Sally, Ned and me are going to own this ranch together. Partners, you might say. Oh, Dad. Oh, God. No, that's just fine, fine. <laughs> now, about that mine you own part of, son. Look, I, uh, Granddad. Oh, wait, wait, Ned. I was told if you succeeded in what you set out to do... The reward would be shares in the mining company. So things have worked out after all. Tunnel's waiting outside, so I'll go along. Adios. 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 Yeah. By Jiminy, you all stand here looking after that masked man like he was the president himself. Well, Granddad, I'll tell you this much. He's a man even the president admires and respects. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.